So in my last video, I went into detail regarding the struggles and obstacles I faced during my first 30 days using Blender. And during that first month, after I learned some of the basic tools and how to navigate the interface, I was really trying to figure out how to create some real world 3D terrain. And I actually ended up with some looks that I was pretty happy with. So in today's video, I'm gonna break down step by step how I was able to create some 3D terrain using real world map data. Okay, so the first and probably the most important step is to find some good map data. Now, more specifically, I need a height map and actually a grayscale height map, which I'm gonna be using the luminance values to drive the displacement of my terrain once inside of Blender. Now, I find this to be the most difficult part of the process because finding good map data, there are so many sources out there and a lot of them are like incredibly convoluted to just figure out how to download the right format you're looking for. However, I did find a site that is probably the most user-friendly option available. This site was uh, really designed to generate custom height maps for a video game called City Skylines. And again, it's incredibly easy to use. Not only is this gonna allow you to export grayscale height maps, but it also allows you to export the same exact position of your map texture or your map image. So let me show you how this works. I'm gonna go over here to these islands off the coast of Africa. And I want to choose a little island because the selection is, um, I think, the biggest area you can select to export one image is just under 70 square kilometers. So I'm going to double click on this island here and just position this. I can go over to my info panel here and there's a ton of different customization options. I can change um, the contrast, the brightness of the height map, and just a whole lot of different options. I can go over to layers here and change the look. So I'm gonna grab satellite. Now quick FYI, I don't know what the licensing options are when you're using this site. So be aware of that if you're working on some like commercial projects. All right, now right down here, it says download PNG height map. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And then right under that, there's also download map image. So now I have these two PNG files. Okay, so now I've got both the height map and the map image here. They're different resolutions, however, they're both perfectly square, so when I place them inside of Blender, I won't have any issue lining them up, or I shouldn't have any issue. But before I jump into Blender, I wanna clean up this imagery, because if you look at the map, the coastline's looking really nasty. I just wanna clean it up, like crop out the clouds, crop out this island, and then in my height map, I wanna crop out the island over here, and it looks like there's some issues in the middle. So I'm gonna quickly bring these into Photoshop and uh, clean them up. All right, so I've cleaned up my imagery here. Got a nice looking height map, got a nice looking map texture. So now I'm gonna go over to Blender and set up a mesh here. So I'm gonna delete this default cube, hold shift, hit A, and then go to mesh, plane, and then I'll hit decimal key on numerical keypad to zoom it in right here. Now, what I wanna do is I need to, well, let's jump over and look at the mesh. I'm gonna hit tab. You can go over to edit mode here to look at your mesh. And I only have four vertices here with one face. It's very simple. What I need to do here is to make my terrain really high quality, I need to subdivide this mesh, which is essentially gonna add more vertices. Now, when I do this, I have that balance between performance and quality. So the more I subdivide, the higher quality terrain I'll get, but the lower that um, performance of my computer is gonna be. So there's that balance that you have to worry about. I'm gonna right click, go to subdivide, and down here in this panel, for number of cuts, I'll put 50. Now, once again, depending on your system, you can you know play around with this setting here. All right, so now I've got this mesh. I'm gonna go back to object mode, and now I wanna add my map image to this, and I'll do it via material. So I'll go to material properties down here, this tab, click on this, and I'm gonna create a new material. And then down here, under base color, I'm gonna click on the little dot, and I'm gonna add an image texture. And now there's a little open button here. I'm gonna open this and then I'll simply navigate to my map image, map final, double click, and that's gonna add that to my plane. But what's going on here? I can't see it. Well, that's because I need to switch over to material mode and now I can see it. For you top down view, got the sweet looking map. Okay, but it's still on the flat plane here. So now I'm ready to displace. So for that, I need to go over to the modifier tab and I'm gonna add a displace modifier. It's right under the deform section here. Displace, and now you can see that displaced the plane here, but I need to add that grayscale height map. So for that, well, let's just make this bigger so we can see what's going on here. There's this new button, so I'm gonna add a new texture. And then over here, you can see show texture and texture tab. And then under type, make sure you have image or movie selected. 
and then I'm going to click the open button once again and navigate to my height map final. And now you can see I've got some displacement, some really, really low poly displacement. I'm going to go back to my modifier and then I'm going to change uh, these parameters over here. So let's change, let's put the mid level to zero. That'll bring the plane back up. Now I'm just going to, using the arrow key, I'm going to make some subtle adjustments here, bring this down to something like 0.3 and check this out. Now you can still see it's very, very low poly. So for this, I'm going to go back to the modifiers and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. You can see that made a little bit of an adjustment here, but the importance here is render order. So I need to put this before displacement and I need to switch it to simple. And now here are the two parameters here. So we can see the detail in the viewport and here is the detail for render. So if I bump this way up, if I bring it to like four, it's gonna start to look really good. Now check out the detail here. Now we got something cool. That's looking pretty good. So I know that um, I can do in render, let's do, let's go even higher. I'm gonna go five and then I'll bring the viewport down to like three or two just so I can work with it quickly here. And now for lighting, I ha already have a light here. But if I zoom out, you can see the light's kind of way far off here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down and just make some adjustments to the light. I'm gonna go to the Object Data Properties tab, and I'm gonna switch this from a point light to an area light. Now, once again, I am new to Blender, so my lighting skills are very much not here. I don't know about like the world shader. I don't know how to use a lot of that stuff. So, so I'm gonna go to Top View, and then with the light selected, I'm gonna hit G, and then I'll move it on the X axis to move it over, and then G again on the Y axis to move it up here, and then I'll hit one on numerical keypad and I wanna bring this light way down. So G and then Z, something like that. Now if I go back to top view, let's take a look at what we got here. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Now I can just bring the intensity of the light down. And I'm gonna bump the viewport back up so I can see it in kind of high quality here. That's looking pretty good. We got a little bit of fall off here, you know, give it a little bit of um, definition. And I'm gonna hit zero on the numerical keypad to quickly do camera view. And I'm gonna position, I want my camera to be straight overhead. So I'm gonna do view um, and then click on camera to view. So now when I navigate, it's gonna move the camera around. And with the camera selected, I'm gonna to go to the item tab and I'm just gonna you know, zero out the rotation here. So it'll be straight over. I'm gonna zero out X and Y. Now it's right over. And I'm gonna to go to output properties and we're gonna switch this to perfectly square, 1080 by 1080. And now I'll grab the Z of my camera and just bring it down like that. All right, so there's a before and an after. All right, I need to stop there because that is my extent of my Blender knowledge at this point. I could play around with the render engine. You know, I've seen a lot of people switch to cycles and I've read that, you know, cycles give you, gives you a more photorealistic view. However, I don't have enough experience with that yet. But this is a great process. If you're new to Blender like me and you want to quickly um, create some uh, 3D terrain of a small area, you can jump in and grab the map data from that site, which I'll link in the article, the corresponding article on Premium Beat, and you can quickly create a terrain that looks pretty darn good. All right, well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. As always, if you did, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you wanna see more Blender content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell.